I sort of shied away from this one. It's Napoli, probably one of the best teams in Europe at the moment against the Frankfurt side who prefer to attack That's than defend. Time. Napoli at minus 200, Frankfurt at plus 575, and it's 2-0 from the first leg with the uh, and a missed penalty, by the way, for uh, for Napoli. The total is at 2.5 with minus 130 that you'll see free goals. Napoli free hit at minus 125. Mina, do we see, is this a Napoli free hit? Because for me, I shied away because Napoli are so good. I'm just wondering if they play like cat and mouse and they just control the game. I don't think they know how to. Uh, they've tried very hard to figure out how to really control games. And and I always feel that they end up being a little bit poorer than they are. They're just a team that sort of always needs to, to try to attack because that's how they keep their concentration. I don't think they're very good at trying to manage the game. And that's that's the issue that I have with them. And that I thought was something that was exposed very well by Lazio in, in their away and four fixture. They lost one and, and won one. But you could see throughout that whole time, they weren't capable of really managing the moments against a team that was so concentrated. Frankfurt, obviously, now there's this huge debate, obviously, because Frankfurt weren't allowed their away supporters. Um, now, there's why is that? Because of because Italian the the ministry, uh, the Interior Ministry, thinks that basically there's been too much fan violence, um, and that they don't feel that they can secure. Uh, the security of everyone that's attending the match, so they've banned the away fans, which obviously goes against the whole point of football because you you know you then just increase security and make sure that you can police it properly. And that was the point of the Germans who say you can't do that, you can't stop our away fans from coming. So then the rule got overturned and they said no, we will welcome them in. And then since then, Naples as a city council has come back and said no, we're absolutely not letting them in. If you reside in Frankfurt and we know your your address is Frankfurt, you will not be allowed admitted into to, to Naples in general. So there's this whole back and forth. So we don't, we still don't know if uh, Stadio uh, Maradona will be accepting any away fans. So if we're talking about just home fans, then Frankfurt will be missing a lot because we all know what happened in the Europa League with Frankfurt and obviously Barcelona. Eintracht's fra- uh, their fans are just unbelievable with what they create. But obviously, there's always going to be violence in certain matches, and you try to just police it in the best way possible. But I do think that that will cause a difference in the atmosphere in general. Napoli have a full squad to choose from, frankly speaking. Frankfurt without um, Colomuani, I think that's going to be a huge shout as well. I just think in the way that these teams, two teams play, that Napoli, if anything, wasted many, many opportunities to to score by even more goals. So I'm, I'm a little bit shocked by that. I think this is, for me, at least we start off with a 2-0. I don't know what happens afterwards, but I imagine Napoli can get at least 2-0, and then we take it from there. Yeah, the way that Frankfurt play their games, Marco, here is they try, especially on the away legs, especially last season, they scored so many early goals and that put like the Frighteners on the uh, on the home sides. Um, are we looking at both teams to score and over? I've asked in the chat here, uh, basically, I think it's what, plus 120, both teams to score and over. Frankfurt must score. So, I mean, that plus 115 of Frankfurt not to score is, is not there. But Napoli, Napoli win on both teams to score. It looks like, I mean, we've done Porto game, we've done Man City game, and now we're doing Napoli Frankfurt. Is this another game marker here where Napoli win and both teams score? Uh, possibly. Um, Frankfurt needed to score in the first leg as well, and they weren't able to. They, they started with real intent, actually, in Germany and were the better team in the early stages, but Napoli. Grew- to Italy and have their the tummies tickled and roll over but um, clearly Moani is a massive miss which would put me off a little bit any sort of Frankfurt based uh, approach here because Jesper Lindstrom is also missing as well uh, which means uh, we're probably going to get uh, Daishi Kamada and Mario Goetze who've been playing well in fairness uh, and Raphael Borre um, who was very good in the Europa League last year but he's been pretty, pretty undercooked this year because of Moani being so good so um, that is an issue for Frankfurt um, but yeah I, just simplifying it you know Napoli they can put all their focus onto this because of the 18-point lead in Syria. 2-0 first leg lead. They were miles better than their opponents in Germany. Their opponents have got their star striker missing. Um, Napoli back at the home stadium with virtually no away fans potentially being here as well. Um, I just think Napoli will be keen to kill this tie as early as possible 
uh, and move on to next their next task at the weekend against Torino. Um, you know, they've never been to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. I think the way in which Spalletti coaches and his kind of mindset will definitely be, let's get this job done and dusted, you know, not leave anything for chance. They will be fielding a first choice 11. And I think there's probably echoes and uh, and similarities really with what we saw with Benfica last week, who had a, a decent first leg lead against Club Brugge back at home and just absolutely tore the place up against Brugge. I don't expect Napoli to be quite so emphatic, but um, I do expect them to get the job done. Uh, and therefore, I was looking at Napoli, Napoli half-time, full-time, which comes in at plus 135, which I think is a, a really nice price, actually. Because um, if they do score first, or if they do score early, or even have a lead at half-time, you know, Frankfurt spirit might be broken early doors and they might start preparing for, for their weekend task as well. So, um, yeah, just quite keen on Napoli in some way or form and that felt like the, the best value opportunity. Devil's advocate tells me that I've got to make sure that people are aware that if Frankfurt score early, we have seen Napoli uh, have a little bit of a wobble up. Not so much in Serie A, not so much this season, but in years gone by, they do get nervous. But obviously, with no Frankfurt fans, they should have most things their own way. Um, Napoli haven't won a corner match at home in the Champions League, and they're minus 350. Frankfurt plus two corners. That does look like a way to go because you know that Frankfurt have got to go and get something out of the game. And as long as they don't have shots on goal, uh, then Napoli are going to be very, very happy. I expect Napoli to be too strong, to be honest. But if we have a look at the official picks, you'll see one of us just sat on the fence. Napoli, half-time, full-time at plus 135. Again, they have agreed. Um, and a lot of people are liking Osserman, anytime scorer at plus 250. Kavica to score. And there's a, a little bit of a throw one in now for Kamada at plus 500 for Frankfurt. He likes his little one-twos around the edge of the box. Really intelligent player. And he will pull the trigger. So uh, Napoli half-time, full-time for my guest. And remember, plus two corners for the away side if you like your corner match. 